I'll, I'll be honest. It, it hasn't, it hasn't hit me yet. Um, I, I, <laughs> I haven't had much time by myself, um, or, you know, time alone with the family. So I think that's, what's been able to keep me from getting too emotional yet. But, um, I know our guys, man, they were having fun in the locker room. Um, they just were, were elated. So, I mean, I, Obviously, when you do something like this, the emotions really heighten. But the I love yous, the I'd run a brick through a brick wall for you. You know, this is what it's all about. I mean, it was just it was incredible. And then <laughs> I heard they were all sitting out outside of their hotel rooms because, you know, we couldn't. And we gave them a little bit of time to visit with family at a distance with masks. Um, but we had to be very safe. But they were all sitting out um, in the hallways last night, you know, just singing songs, uh, having a great time, you know, and then it was a quick, we got to get up, test, eat breakfast and get on the plane to come to Indy. So um, we even really even hadn't had a chance to just meet as a team again. Um, when we were in our team room downstairs for a couple hours, you know, we had our whole travel party and you know, we had to test again, then eat, then we watched the selection show. So uh, I, when we come together for the first time, which might not be until tomorrow night, from what I understand, as we're sequestered in our rooms, um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of emotion, you know, spread. Wayne, um, last last night, your press conference, you look like you're trying to keep it together pretty hard. And, and, you, and you did, but you said at some point you were going to lose it. Did you, did you, did you ever lose it last night at all? I No, no, no. And I'm, I'm just waiting because I know it's going to, it's going to happen. Um, but I just, um, yeah, really, really didn't get much. I like, couldn't go hang out with anybody, but you know, I just was kind of stir crazy and was just, I was rehashing the game, the season. Um, but I know it's going to hit me. I know as I get older, I'm getting a, get a little more sentimental. Um, you know, I, I, I did, I was honest. I, you know, I broke down a little bit in my room yesterday afternoon, you know, just thinking about my family, the team, everything we've been through, you know, and, you know, quite honestly, there were times when, you know, I was, I was praying for strength and, and for guidance to lead, you know, to lead these guys, you know, in, in, a, in a way, a positive way to get them through everything we'd been through. And, you know, so a lot of that stuff kind of came to the forefront, you know, as I started thinking about, you know, preparing for the championship game and how the hell did we get here? Hey, Wayne, um, about an hour before tip off, I had my first vaccine shot. I didn't know a side effect was going to be you guys with a huge win. Congratulations on it. Um, Thanks, Ron. What do you think about Tennessee a first round matchup? Well, I, I'll be honest. Um, the coaches are putting together some scouting reports, but I, I really don't know much about them. I know that Viscovi's a stud. Um, I've got some good friends in Tennessee um, who have sent me a little text scouting report and all kinds of advice. Um, I, I did see them play a little bit against Florida the other day. I know they like to pressure man and switch everything, but, you know, we saw that with UCLA and with Oregon. Um, so, you know, it, it shouldn't be anything, you know, new now they're going to have, you know, some, some athletes as well, but, um, we'll, we'll dive in. The good thing is we've got time, you know, we're going to have a lot of downtime, um, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow we'll, we'll be sequestered for, you know, at least three quarters of the day, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but, um, you know, they the SEC is a very powerful conference and. You know, they've got a great coach and Coach Barnes, and they're going to be strong and athletic. Wayne, um, I, I'm assuming you had some time to meet with your family last night. I'm just curious, did you talk to Trace much? I'm just kind of curious how that went, you know, because you guys always wanted to get to the tournament, and now he's there He's there to be able to kind of be there with you, but he's, you know, not on the team right now. What, what did that conversation go like? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I did an interview with the Pac-12 network after the game and, you know, thank, thank the families of the players for hanging with us, you know, through, through some tough times and continuing to believe and, you know, thank everybody else. And, 
you know, I said this was for Beaver Nation and all that. I said, but personally, you know, I I dedicated that to Trace, you know, from father to son, just for all that he had gone through in his career, you know, helping us, you know, get back there uh, in, in his freshman year, such a huge part of it. And then to get hurt late and not be able to share in that was was tough on him. And then last year, you know, <laughs> You know, you can say it, it's easy to say, but I, I think we would have, we were confident we would have followed the similar script, you know, last year, you know, having won that exciting first round game, you know, and then, and then drawing an Oregon team that, you know, was without Duarte, we, you know, we felt we could have made it happen again. And even, even two years ago, we felt we got jobbed a little bit from going to the NIT and, you know, Trace worked so hard to try to, lead us back to you know a place we hadn't been in a while and he just seemed like things didn't go you know go his way and um you know obviously this is this year's team and we've done some incredible things but I really wanted to share that with him uh coach quick question on you had a couple <laughs> early losses or you know the Arizona loss the Portland loss but when did you really feel that things flipped with this team because you could totally see it here in the last you know, month. Well, I think it was after the Arizona game at home, you know, no, no doubt about it. We, uh, we really had a grinded out eight hour staff meeting came in early. We, we had moved practice back later the next day because of, uh, you know, the, the, the game went late against Arizona and, uh, you know, we, we were, we were, not not going at each other and like raising our voices, but really challenging each other as a staff um, as to how how what direction we needed to go to turn things around. And we were throwing all sorts of stuff off the off the wall and um, varying opinions, and uh, just kind of came out of it at the end. You know, I just said, "Listen, we've we've got to we've got to teach these guys not just how to have success, but." we said they don't know what success is right now. So let's start, you know, from the bottom and, and just make it simple. And that's where we talked about executing, playing harder than our opponent and enjoying each other out there. And those three things right there. Um, we told our guys at film that, that evening before practice, if, if we would buy into just doing those three things that, that it would mean we're successful. And, and, and I said, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to win this Saturday or next Tuesday, but it will lead to success eventually. But you guys have to buy into it. Um, and to their credit, they did. And and really, other than the game at Colorado, which was a little bit of a fluke, too, because it was, uh, you know, the Arizona game, we, we were missing a couple guys. We had just had a seven-day pause. And then Colorado, you know, we played two games at home get up early the next morning and charter to Boulder, play them, you know, late afternoon the next day. Um, and, and they played really good that night. I think, I think those were kind of aberrations a little bit. And then we just, uh, we just found a way to keep, 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 you know, swinging away. And, um, you know, we, we got on a nice little roll. And even though we lost the game at home against Oregon, I think that was our last little bit of a wake up call to reel our guys back into getting, getting on to uh, the page uh, of the things that had turned it around. And, and that's what we mentioned in leading up to the tournament. Like don't guys, if you really want to achieve something great, stick to the simple things that help turn the season around. And we reiterated that going into last night's game that uh, even though this is just because it's the championship, it's Saturday night in the PAC 12 tournament. Let's, let's not change how we prepare and how we go about it. And, to their credit, um, they they did that by and large, and um, you know, the buy-in, the guys stopping, you know, the the you know removing of the egos. Uh, we played less. Um, I don't want to say selfish, but you know, we didn't have those long stretches of individual play, all, and and then the buy-in to the defensive effort. I think all those things contributed. Wait, hey, what's Wayne, it this been like? Go ahead. Uh, what's it been like over the last few days just to see all the support and reactions from former players, fans, and, and everyone else? Uh, it's been incredible. Uh, I, don't, 
I don't get on social media. So, you know, people just kind of tell me, you know, that the fans are going nuts. Um, and it's, it's great to see. I just, I, I know this, we've, we've had some ups and downs and, and, you know, you hear about the doubters out there. I, I don't listen to them because the, the people that are supportive drown, drown those few voices out, but, you know, you know, they're always going to be there. And, um, the, the, the neat, the neat thing is, uh, the people that have been in your corner from day one through thick and thin, um, when, when, when they reach out and, and they share their tears with you and their joy, that's, you know, that's, that's the stuff that really, really hits home, you know, and makes you happy. And we've, we've got a faithful, faithful group, uh, faithful inner circle of supporters. Um, and, and I'm, I'm just so thrilled, thrilled for them. Hey, Wayne, what do you think about the uh, uh, progression of Alatiche and Andela and how huge a factor were they in this whole run? Yeah, they, they've been huge. In fact, Trace kind of joked, you know, if, but you get rid of me and you guys go to the tournament. And, uh, and I kind of said, well, I said, Trace, I, th I think you'd have been all right with Alatiche and Andela in there with you. And um, they just, you know, they're buying Rodrigue's physicality, first of all. He's such a good kid with such a great spirit. Um, he's our most physical presence in there. I mean, he he really emerged in the tournament. And and then uh, Rodrigue down the stretch, um, you know, the last several weeks has just gotten more and more consistent. He's gotten us big baskets in the paint. Obviously, second chance opportunities, um, you know, and then defensively he's been a, a real stalwart for us. And he's still so young with the game and in the game you know, that his, his ceiling is really, really high. So we're, we're excited to have him obviously. And we're going to need him, uh, both those guys, because as our, as our post presence has, has really come along. Um, it's, it's, I don't think it's any surprise that we've played better as a team. And then, you know, how about Maurice Kalu last night? I mean, here's a guy who started a lot of games early on, you know, was relegated to the bench and his minutes really, really dropped. And, you know, he came in to have a couple of heart to hearts and he just kept kept staying positive, hanging in there. And, and it's funny because all year long, you know, as a coach, you try to tell these guys, just stay positive and hang in there. You never know when you're going to get called upon and you got to have a positive mindset if you're going to help, you know, contribute uh, to our success. And last night was, you know, it was a game we knew would be a good matchup for him, especially when they put Horn in because they're similar. Um you know, and he's just got to defend and rebound his position if he wants to play. Um, and he did a better job of that. And then he made a lot of baskets for us. Wayne, going back to last night afterward, I'm just trying to picture guys sitting outside their hotel room singing. That just seems like maybe about the coolest scene you could, you could, you could envision. Did, no. did you recognize any of the songs? Well, I, I was, they were actually on the floor above me. So I, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't get to share in it, but my assistant coaches told me, and, oh yeah. So for years, for years, uh, I've had a tradition whenever we've won on the road, we have played ain't no mountain high enough on the bus and, and, and the team has to sing it. And we carried that from Montana to Oregon state and, you know, a quick, neat story when we won at Oregon two years ago, uh, I, I left. Uh, Matthew Knight with my wife and daughter and we, we had ordered food at um, uh, the Long Branch in Monroe because you know we knew that's what the football team did years and years and years ago whenever they won in Eugene they would stop and have a few pops and grab food for the players and so we had ordered food for the guys and I got there a few minutes ahead of them and Sean Scheffler had printed off uh, the words to that song, because some of the new guys uh, didn't didn't know it. And then they walked in and said, Coach, we've got a surprise for you. And they put it on a, one of those, you know, portable speakers. And we sang that song in the Long Branch. And it was pretty cool. And so last night, my family broke that out from the stands and then got Zach Lassiter to have the DJ put it over the loudspeakers. Um, and it was kind of towards the end of all the celebrating, but 
it was a pretty cool moment, um, you know, having our guys sing our, our, our theme song from when we get road wins uh, in the middle of T-Mobile after cutting down the nets. Yeah. Coach, you guys were ranked the 12th team in the Pac-12 conference coming into this season, and you now have got the 12th seed into the NCAA tournament. Does that have any sort of special meaning or maybe a sign from above for you? Damn, damn right. Damn right. Everybody, everybody said it as soon as we saw we got the 12th seed. And uh, I think I think you guys heard the story that um, Ryan Lawrence, our equipment manager, um, he and I talked when we got the the nice new postseason shooting shirts from Nike. Um, I said, let's put a little something on the inside. I said, is there any way we can just write? I thought he was going to do it with a Sharpie 12. And so when they look to see, you know, their initials on it, they'll see that and, and it, it'll mean something to him. Well. You know, he ironed it on really nice orange 12. Jared Lucas was the first one that noticed it and, and went nuts. Um, and then that was kind of our rally cry down the stretch. And then when they saw that we popped up as the 12 seed, everybody it looked like, yep, this is going to mean something, something special. So we'll keep milking it. We'll keep milking it for sure. Coach. Wayne, this is your uh, this is your fifth time you've, you've been to the NCAs, and they're all different, obviously. But does does this one have any feel at all like any of the ones you had at Montana? You know, it 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 does from the sense that um, you know, in a one bid league, you've got to win the the tournament to go. Um, you know, and and it was really neat the first time we went here at Oregon State because it had been such a long drought. Um, but, you know, having to run the gauntlet in the tournament to get that bid is, is something that's pretty special. And, you know, we, we did it once, I think, as the two seed um, and then twice as the number one seed. And, and we hosted the tournament at Montana. But um, this this one and then those were some incredible kids and, and great teams. Um, and, and, and we won those championships in different fashions. But for this team to come as far as we had in the, in the kind of year that we've had on and off the court and then to beat, you know, the four seed, the one seed and the three seed to do it. Um, you know, I, I, I got texts from several uh, head coaches in the league and just saying, you know, what an incredible run. And you guys proved that on, on this week you were the best team in the league. And, you know, that, that means a lot. It means a lot because, um, you know, you, you know that your your adversaries are some pretty cool guys, you know, to reach out and say that. But also, um, you know, when when they know that they're pulling for your program, I think because they appreciate and respect the way you do things. Coach, Wayne, this ahead. last week. Go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, Wayne, this last week. Um, what maybe did you learn about your team or, or possibly was there something that uh, you were uncertain about that your, your guys kind of confirmed for you? Well, you know, we, we knew because we had come back and, you know, from, from several deficits in, in, in other games, um, we, we, the big thing is we, we learned that the maturity and the growth and all the hurdles that we went through, you know, led, led to this, but, the, the thing I'm most impressed with, Jess, Jesse, is this week, all, all week long, I just talked about staying loose, free in your mind. Guys, just free your mind. And if you play hard and play for each other, you're, you're going to play at a level you didn't think you were capable of. And they really bought into that. And um, just the way they responded to that, and, and it wasn't like we did anything amazing as a coaching staff. You know, it was it was just – getting them to believe by freeing their minds up and staying together, they, they could accomplish some great things. Now, the big challenge last night, I was concerned because they had taken care of the first two steps to get to the championship. And they wanted to get to that championship. They wanted that opportunity. My concern with, with, with our immaturity and, and, and youth, you know, was on ESPN, playing for all the marbles, were we going to revert to some of those moments where we got, um, you know, a little selfish uh, and get away from, you know, what had, what had gotten us to this point? And, you know, you know, 
maybe being a little bit upset when they got subbed out, you know, if they only got a two minute rotation instead of an eight minute rotation, you know, some of the things that you, you know, um, caused some frustration at times, not very often, but at times, you know, would creep in just because of the moment. And, and remember, we only had two guys out there that had been in our program for more than a year. And I was really blown away uh, at how they stuck to the plan and they stayed on page with what our plan was to do and, and, and really the plan that had led to so much success in the past. And you're talking about a bunch of sophomores and new guys um, really told me a lot about, you know, their character and, and really their, their willingness to put the team in front of anything else to achieve the ultimate goal, which is what you start, you know, you say from, from day one. Um, coach, you said that you're not on social media, um, but Rodrigue had a, a tweet earlier today and he talks about, I remembered when I decided to join Oregon state, a lot of people told me I made a bad decision because they aren't good and I won't have a chance to win any titles. Don't listen to what people say, just do you. How then do you take that and what you've built with this team and the success and then project that forward for, for keeping this thing going? Well, I, I, you know, I, I think word is obviously spreading of what our program's about, how we do things, the authenticity and the sincerity of it. Um, and then whenever you get to where you have a season like this, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't imagine the amount of recruits um, and the emails we're getting from prospects, you know, off of this. And, um, and then when your players are putting that message out there and, and others – you know, are reading it, that it's, it's a big, big boost. And, um, you know, it's, it's like the same stuff that'll make you laugh will make you cry. And you, you've got to go through some growing pains, uh, in order to achieve great things. And, um, that's why I was so quick to thank the families of our current players for their continued support and buy-in through some tough times. And, uh, it, like, again, I mean, people know our, our, our culture, um, and, and, and really the way we do things at Oregon state, it, it's spreading. So we're going to continue to attract high character guys and talented guys, um, and, and continue to, you know, like we've done every year, pretty much other than the year we were devastated with, with injuries. We've seems like accomplished more and more each and every year. And that's, that's what it's all about. Maintaining consistency and, you know, striving for more each and every season. Coach, was Jocelyn the loudest of the tinkles up in the stands? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I worried about it after the first game, and I kind of sent a text, you know, to, you know, just to, to calm down. And I might have confused her with one of our other rabid fans a few times. Um, but um, they provided a ton of energy. And somebody told me there was a tweet today that somebody said, you know, they, they were going to hire her. I don't know there's there's that commercial that that has a hype man I don't, I don't know what it is but that uh if this guy's got to make an 18 foot putt or close a multi-million dollar deal he's bringing Jocelyn in to get him <laughs> to get the energy going but it, it sure was neat it sure was neat she sent me a text in the middle of the night that I didn't read until I was on the plane that got me a little mist, misty eyed um just talking about you know the pride for us and how we do things and you know some of the ways we've had to ride um to get to you know enjoy something like we did last night wayne what are the next few days like for you guys you mentioned you're you're in your room i think until tomorrow what 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 what, what are you able to do the next couple of days we can't do any we, once once we left our team room after we tested and got into our own rooms we're on lock lockdown so we, we can't leave. Food's going to be delivered to our door. They knock and leave. Breakfast the same in the morning. And then in the early afternoon, we'll go downstairs again to, to take our second PCR test. Uh, and then we have to wait a few hours after that. And then we'll get the thumb up um, to meet as a team again. And then maybe to start planning when we can get on the court and practice. So, um, you know, our guys, I'm sure, all have Netflix. Um, we're going to let them use the on-demand in their room to, to watch some movies. 
um, you know, and, and also next week's finals week. So, you know, we've, we've told them to hit the books hard and make sure, you know, that we use these next couple of days where we have a lot of downtime wisely. Um, and then, then we'll be able to shift to the focus to improving some of the areas we need to, and then, and then putting in the scout for Tennessee. So maybe Tuesday, then you start practicing or, or would it be? Yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking, yeah, we're thinking Tuesday we'll be able to get back on the court, which is good after, you know, after playing three days in a row, um, you know, we, we need to take a couple of days off. Where'd you guys have us projected? What seed? Let me hear that. Oh, I, it was, it was pretty clear. It was going to be 12. That's yeah. just because 11s are, are the at large. And I mean, I know the, the, your net was so low that, that I was, I just didn't think they were going to. Well, you don't need to turn this into a negative, Nick. I mean, come on. Uh, no, you asked me why. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. trying to tell you. I'm kidding. I mean, I'm, kidding. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you can, you can read through all of that better, better than me. That's why I don't ever worry about here, it. I'll give, I'll like, give you, I'll, here, I'll give you this one for, see, how's this one for motivation? The Oregon State hasn't won a first round game since 82. Is that uh, six straight yeah, loss? Well, that was, is that something that we, had, we hadn't, we hadn't been to a championship in 33 years either. Well, there you go. I liked the 12. No. I had you at 12 too, just because I think it's, I, I'm a big sign. Believer in signs. There's yeah, yeah. And there's 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 always a couple 12 five upsets every year. And I'm I'm telling you, I don't I don't know what'll happen, but I, I do know this. Our guys won't be scared. Um, you know, I think in the first time we went uh to play in the NCAA tournament, we I, I don't say scared. We had some guys that let the nerves get to them a little bit. This group's not gonna be nervous. They are not gonna be nervous. Now, you know, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. But this this team will not be intimidated. They won't they won't be nervous. I don't know whether that means we'll perform well, but um, I'll be confident heading into that game with this group because the three teams we just beat on the last three nights, you know, weren't slouches. Pretty damn good. What well, one other thing I was going to ask over the I think it's the last seven games you guys have shot forty nine percent I think from the floor. Um, we're, I mean, I, I mean, you obviously got some capable shooters, but what, what do you know what kind of triggered triggered that maybe? Or yeah, what? you know, I, I stepped away from, from coaching the offensive side and shifted my focus to the defensive side and had Sean Scheffler step in and start coaching the offense. I said, I said 49, not 19. Oh, oh. No, we just, you know what it comes down to? We've been fighting our guys for so long to establish a post presence and it doesn't have to be a guy getting 26, you know? And, and I think by, by them finally buying into that um, we've gotten production in there and then it's, it's freed up uh, our shooters and then we've turned up our defense and, and we've been able to get out and turn some defense into offense. I think, I think that's what's really helped. Now I'll, I'll be honest. I, what did we score against Oregon? Um, shoot, I can't remember. Is it 70, 75, no, 75, 64, 70, 75, you know, and, and, um, I think in our two games against Colorado in the regular season, I think we averaged 56 and we scored over 70, um, on them, you know, 80 against UCLA when we struggled to score, even though, you know, there was overtime, um, our, our guys are more confident. We're more balanced. And, and we're turning some defense into offense. And that's, that's going to be a key um, on Friday as well. You know, we, we can't face a, you know, knock you down, drag you out, half-court defense for 40 minutes. 